I'm going to start the video now. Okay. Are, you, are you going to talk in a normal accent? Yeah. Okay. What do you want me to say in the beginning? Nothing. Hi? No. Nope. just smile? Just smile and look good. That's why you're here. That doesn't look good. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? Welcome back. So today, it's going to be a little bit different. I know a big trend right now is to do these reaction type videos on YouTube. And because my concept for today's video comes from another YouTube video, I figured why not jump on the wagon. And then on top of that, I was like, well, let's bring Riley in because I figured she could share some unique perspectives since she's been working with so many of you guys in her one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, I'm sure that a lot of that's going to kind of translate over into the three truths that we're going to talk about today. So what we're going to do is kind of go through this Joe Rogan and Neil deGrasse Tyson interview, just four minutes of it, and we're going to stop it along the way. And I'm going to share my insights with you as far as how I think these three truths are applicable to trading any market. Um, and Riley's hopefully going to comment and give us some insight as well. Coming soon from us is going to be a lot of new stuff. So with this move to Florida coming up uh, in like 30 days or so, we have a lot in the works that we're kind of sitting on right now because we don't want to just put it out here in this apartment when we were set, getting a bigger place and a nicer place. We want to do it there. So stay tuned for that. I'm going to have information on that down below in the description, some links where you can follow Riley, stay up to date with her, and then we'll be keeping you guys updated as we get closer this to- This video is a hint. Yeah, the video is a hint. We'll be, work, we'll be working together a lot more since as the one-on-ones have gotten busier, even today, someone wanted to book one-on-ones with both of us instead of individually. So we figured since people are asking for that in coaching calls, let's bring it to YouTube because there could be some value. But anyway, we're going to get into this video. So like I said, these are the three truths that Neil deGrasse Tyson says are like, I guess the way he describes them is they're like universal truths to anything that you do. Instead of me even telling you what the three are, let's just start the video. You ready? Yep. Your earphone clicked in? Mm hmm There are three kinds of truths in the world, okay? Because oh. we're in a, like a tree. Three? Let me, I'll give you three, okay? The Rudy Giuliani kind? Yeah, well, welcome to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you ready? Apparently true isn't always true. I know, so let me try to okay. unpack that. Okay. All right, you ready? Okay. Alternative facts? Uh, there's something called an objective truth. Okay, so the first one is an objective truth. I like when he said true isn't always true, because when they made this video, it was right when Trump was, like, coming into force, so they're kind of making fun of him a little bit in that. But the first one, like he said, is an objective truth. So listen here. An objective truth is something that is true whether or not you believe in it. And the methods and tools of science are uniquely conceived to seek out and establish objective truths. Okay, so the way that I see objective truths into in our universe of trading is these objective truths are what we can use to build a quantified trading method where we have rules, where we have details or principles that we have to kind of apply in order to see success. And those objective truths are things that also are constant, like they don't change. So another like note that I had was that here you could look at it, for example, like price action. Price action is an objective truth because as that price comes in, there's no arguing it. It is what it is from your broker and there's no way around that. But that was the first thing that I thought of to apply objective truths into our trading. Do you have anything? I feel like the chart itself is the objective truth. And once we get more into the personal truths, I'm going to tie that together a little bit, but just keep in mind that I think the chart itself is an objective truth. Would you say that like the indicators on the chart also would be objective because price action takes information, well, the indicators take information from price action to create how they paint. So everything on the chart you're saying is objective. Yeah. Even the indicators, because that was something I did think about, I'm sure. Like we can go back and forth on this, like indicators themselves, some people could say that they're subjective, but in reality, because of where they're getting their data, they're not because the price is what it is. And the price is the information that that indicator uses, right? Let's keep going. And this I'm in referring to the invocation of the scientific method. No one scientific result, result, research result is true until it is verified by other people's research results using a different experimental method with different wall current from another country. So even more, I would say that that makes me think about our method specifically and how, yes, I tested it. Yes, I was like the first one. Mm -hmm. But then when other people start to do it and other people see it the same way and they show it in chart markups, that kind of reinforces it almost as an object. It reinforces it itself, the system itself, as an objective truth. To a point, the system's an objective truth because he'll let him finish explaining what he says it is. 
When your competitor says, I think you're wrong, let me show how you're wrong, and they re reproduce your experiment and get the same result. When you have generally the same results emerging, that is a newly discovered objective truth about the natural world. And when you have objective truths, they're not later shown to be false. Right there. So the system in right now is an objective truth because it is true now, but he's saying in order to be a true objective truth in the future, it does not change true. And we know that the system has to be adaptable because right now it is true, but over time we might, might have to, to make yeah. Changes it's always to it. changed. That's a good right. point. So like it's, it has to it's be... permanent to a point. Right. Okay. So it's not a total objective truth in Neil's eyes, but for the sense of the trading topic, it's an objective truth. Cool. So any other ideas that you guys have about objective truths, comment them down below. Let's move on to the second one here. Mm. That's an objective truth. Then you have personal truths. These are truths that you hold dearly. Jesus is your savior. Mohammed is the final prophet on earth. You, you know, uh, Abraham is your... You okay, so he's going to get very religious here. But on the idea of subjective truths or personal truths, for me, this is where I feel like you can have a lot of preconceived biases when you come into trading, and those could be personal truths, whether someone that you know that says they were trading creates a bias for you, and then that becomes a personal truth for you. Even to that point, it's then influencing your trading, and it's not based on hard facts. For example, one thing that I feel like that can really tie into is like how people feel FOMO, where they think that there's a way that they should be trading or an indicator that they should be using or something like that. These things that other people go around and kind of say, they then become like personal truths or like this is the only way to trade could even be a better one. Like naked trading is the only way to trade. You never need indicators. That's a personal truth. Because or my favorite is when people are in a trade and they're like, but I feel like it's going to do this. And it's like, but the market doesn't care what you feel feel like right, it, it'll so, go right through your personal truth into the objective truth of what's actually true so anytime you're really feeling and that can even go into like how ego drives your decisions and that comes from when you're not on the plan anytime you're in that boat you're falling down these personal truths which really i mean he's going to go into it about religion where you can see where it can lead to war and violence i don't know how it would lead to war and violence in our trading yeah. but i think the the idea is you could have been told or you could see other people doing things that aren't necessarily based on what's actually real and what's actually true because of biases. And we all know that that's true. You can see that in society all over the place today. These are your personal truths. There's a heaven you're going to. No one is going to take that from you. Not in a free country where freedom of expression and speech and religion is protected. Mm -hmm. It's a personal truth. The problem here is you can't convince someone else of your personal truth without some act of persuasion and in the limit an act of violence mm. okay in the limit in the limit this yeah. is how you get holy wars so i have this personal truth and i require that you share my personal truth but why is that that's a recipe truth for disaster and not a belief because the people who hold the belief will tell you that it's a truth so i don't want to take that usage of the word away from them i like that when he says that, the people who hold the belief will tell you that it's the truth. So you could, like back to my example of the naked trading, like you could believe that indicators will never work. They're lagging. They're, they're you know, they're, they really don't work. And then that becomes your truth, even though it's not based on anything that is itself true. It's based on a subjective personal truth. It's not based on real data. Even people like when they're strategy hopping, like when he says that, I instantly like had just like a reminder of think of like the new people that join the system and they try and bring all of their personal truths into the system to like make their own uh, like people try to combine mighty right. system right. and it's like you're combining your old personal truths of whatever it is you used with to objective try and truths do that exist with in, a yeah. right to where then they can't follow the objective truths like some of the traders that i work with they'll be like oh yeah i have my trading plan everything is completely detailed and then we'll like be talking about the okay, well, where did you make an error? Like, where did you stop trading the plan? And it's always because it goes back to a personal truth that overrid, over, yeah, overrides, overrides, overrides their objective truth, which is the trading plan, because they're so caught up in this, like the personal truth. Keep watching. At the end, we're going to tie this all together. We want to get through the political truth. But then I want you guys to see why it's important to be able to determine, to identify 
the facts and statements that you're being told and you're reading and you're consuming, you want to be able to decipher, is it a political truth, is it a personal truth, or is it an objective truth? That's the reason we're, we're going through this. Okay, so you're giving them I'm the giving, definition. I'm giving them the word truth, but modifying it to say personal truth. That's correct. Oh. I'm not. They've, they've used it that way for millennia. I'm not going to... Hmm. Okay? They, they feel that is true, and it's true in their bones. I'm simply saying that because it's your personal truth, you cannot require that someone else share it. And in this country, because in the United States, because God is not mentioned in the Constitution, itself a controversial thing in its day, by the way. Actually, God is mentioned, but in, in a very insignificant way. The, the Constitution is a God-free document. And because it's a God-free document, it protects your expression of religious faith. Because it means the government has no say in who and what you believe or why. If the Constitution said, mention God and Jesus, well, there it is. There's Christianity built into the fabric of the country. Mm -hmm. And if you want to be some other religion, you're going to have a hard time because we can set laws against it. This is why so many religiously persecuted people came to the United States to escape their country where they could not practice their religion a little differently or a lot differently from what was going on in their home to, in their homeland is, so they, is it a problem though to t to call it truth i would rather not call it truth but i i'm i'm a big word guy mm -hmm. and i respect what happens to words i don't always like it but i respect it and so i'm going to say there's an objective truth which is true whether or not you believe it there's your personal truth which is true to you third truth is a political truth political truth is something that is true because it has been incessantly repeated <laughs> it's, and then you just believe it at like that point what? Give uh, me one of those. Uh, okay what's Hillary Clinton's first name it's crooked. <laughs> it's a funny example but it's true because like if you like for me the political truths really come in when you think about Instagram social media and the how, Lambos yeah how that paints the image of what people think trading is yep. you know what I mean so those are the political truths and now again what like I said a couple minutes ago two things though the language that he emphasizes he's like I'm a big words guy I want to let words be what they are even if I don't agree with them that's really important because we create language in the way that we trade and with certain systems and that language gives you power so hit look at that like such a smart guy acknowledging that I think is cool and then two the, like I said the reason for this video is really to show you guys, hopefully, how to look at everything you're being told and see, is it in one of these three buckets? Is it that objective truth? Is it based on real facts and real science and real data? Or is it a subjective or political truth? Both of those two kind of sit in the same bucket for me because they're not really true. Now, I think there's still, to be fair, pros to having certain personal truths, certain subjective truths. Like I think of first, like chakra cards, like Eric's cards. Mm -hmm. There's no science in them. There's no science in it, but it doesn't make him a bad person for believing in it. If anything, right. it makes him a better person. So the impact of that personal truth is positive. So not every personal truth is negative. No. That's not what we're saying at all. But when we're talking about specifically trading and making money, you want to be able, I think, to be able to sit down and say, okay, is the, are the details in this plan objective or is it subjective? Or is it political? Is it driven by what everybody else is doing? The harmonic scanners or whatever other indicator is hot at that time. Those are where the political truths kind of seep in. I feel like the political truths are like the the too good to be trues. Yeah. Like the turn your phone But you into don't know that ATM. when you start. Right. Right. You don't know and that. And I feel like all subjectives and personal truths are all truths going back to the ego, whether it's good or bad. Because I think that a lot of times we view ego as like this negative thing. But it's not. The ego is just the identity of self. And sometimes, a lot of times, I'm seeing with working with traders, it it's breaking through the ego to be able to accept the objective truths. Like, they hold on so strongly to their ego or what they think they know or what might have been true in the past. And they don't just let that go to accept the objective truth for what it is. Even though we know objective truths are true and personal truths could be objective truths, but not all objective truths are personal truths. Right. So that's where you have to kind of bring in that awareness of all of your thoughts and think to yourself, is this me and my ego just thinking this is true, whether it's positive or negative, doesn't matter, or is this 
actually true. And I think differentiating, differentiating that and bringing awareness to it is what really has helped um, traders that I've worked with because now when they're trading and they get all these flutters of emotions and um, they're in the middle of their trading plan going through the checklist and they're like, okay, well, what next? And maybe they feel inclined to act based on a personal truth that they know is actually hurting their objective truths and hurting their overall plan. They're able to bring awareness to that and be like, okay, I know that I'm feeling this way and that normally I would want to do this, but I'm going to recondition my brain and my mindset now to follow these objective truths. And having the trading plan really helps with that and being very detailed right in front of your face because then it's kind of harder to let that ego your personal truth override the objective truth but it still can so that's it definitely where can I, that's where like i know i need the reinforcement and it still does it still yes. does yeah you need reinforcement it's right. not just like oh i wrote the plan that's done i got right. it it's like you need yes. to drive it home and then that can help you because like no matter what i feel like we are all going to still make decisions towards at some point political truths and personal truths absolutely because personal a, truths don't have to be right, negative but it's about they picking the right ones you gotta right. pick the right ones and being aware yeah it's it doesn't even matter if they're positive or negative it's just bringing the awareness of is this a personal truth or is this an objective truth or is this a political truth Could and you, political truths kind of just like those should be the first easy identifiers so like what's a political truth let's right. get that COVID 19 is that a political truth or is that an objective truth? Oh man, I'm gonna get our YouTube video taken down for asking that. But is there anything else that you think people should keep in mind when trying to separate facts that they take in from objective to subjective, personal versus real? Because in trading, like it always comes back to the data. It always mm -hmm. comes back to what's actually making you money, you know? Right. And again, like you said, I see traders latching on to systems when they don't want to let go and just realize that they're wrong. They would rather be wrong and lose money than be wrong and stop and then change and make money. From my findings so far, <coughs> um, traders have the hardest time letting go when they don't know why they're trading. When they don't know why they're doing what they're doing, they latch on to not only personal truths, but also political truths. And I think some overall political truths of trading um, that seep into the personal truths are the freedom, the unlimited money, like everything you hear that trading can give you, it's like, okay, great. Every trader wants that. What else? When you get that, then what? So it's like when they really tap into like why they're doing it and what they want for themselves to feel fulfilled, um, which is kind of funny because that's where it's like you do need to know your personal truth outside of the charts. Right. Because your personal truths are the what The trick is to not let them come into trading. Right. But I think it's all in, they have a, an easier time letting go of personal truths in their trading when they're tapped into their why, when they know why am I doing this? They see the greater outcome because then they're able to look at themselves from like a third person point of view and truly just be aware of what's going on. And that comes from pointing out their strengths. You point out the right yep. strengths, you highlight that, then they can lean into the idea of being a yeah. objective focused person rather than subjective. So many traders look at some of their strengths as weaknesses. Really? Like yes. what? Like um, competition is very viewed negative or command. Hmm. They don't understand how that their strength is a strength and how to use it to their benefit. Um, how so, do you use competition to your benefit? So a lot of people Compete with, with competition, yeah, it's rooted in the comparison. It's not even necessarily that it needs to be competition with others. The competition strength is that you need the comparison to be able to see and measure where you're going. So you just So if you can create those measurabilities inside. within yourself, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Then your competition can be used uh, to like, your advantage. I, I definitely need to So it's like that. aligning your strengths then with your why, and it's like, whew, you're off to the races. And then once you become a, even slightly successful, then you realize how stupid it is to try to compare yourself to other people. Yeah, everyone you know, is so individually and unique. The, the, comparing yourself and living in that subjective truth, and it's also a political truth because you're both looking at where you think you should be based on what society is telling you. If you live in that, you never will reach your full potential ever. But then when you stay out of that, you could become more successful and more independent than everybody else. That's what we're finding. A very simple example is think of a TV set. Everyone in the TV set is an actor. Mm -hmm. So everyone in the trading world is a trader, but all the actors have different positions, different roles to create the scene that you're seeing in the show. Yep. So it's like, if everybody was the same and had the same why, it'd be like watching a show with the same character. It'd be stupid. No one right. Would watch there'd it. be no point. Right. No, this was good. I'm glad we did this. 
I hope that everybody finds some value in it. Let us know in the comments. Like I said, Riley and I are going to be working on some new content for you guys, probably coming on this channel for sure, and then more on a separate channel like we're going to be starting. July. Yeah, we have to get the new house set up and everything like that. But once it's set up, there will be a lot more content focused on trading, on making money, building wealth, and also a lot of this mindset stuff, making the right decisions and living, I think, a life that everybody can be proud of because that's kind of what we've walked into over the last few years is a space now where we can not only enjoy life but also be proud of it and share it with people so hopefully riley's insight and my insight can bring that to you guys so let us know in the comments if you have any other questions for riley like i said i'm going to link her information in the description we'll make sure you guys can get in touch with her drop the questions and then maybe i'll save the questions for when we do the interview and we'll do the interview in like two weeks yeah cool. what do you guys want to know